In this episode, we are going to grab a fistful of Cobra to celebrate Mayhem Month here at my side of the laundry room. So, stick around. Dorks and Dorkettes, and welcome to It Came From, My Side of the Laundry Room. My name is Rob, and in this episode, we will be grabbing a fistful of Cobra to celebrate Mayhem Month here at the channel. Like I said, Mayhem Month is a look at the villainous side of the toys that we like, the pop culture that we like, and we're just looking at bad guys, and it's been quite enjoyable. Unfortunately, I missed last week's episodes, which I had... A couple nice ones planned simply because we got a new member to the laundry room family we adopted a new puppy she's running around here somewhere and I just took that first week off of since we got her just to because I don't think she's the proper age and height requirement to be running around the laundry room so this is just a trial basis and we'll see how it goes but it's impacted my filming and editing process greatly she's a great little dog she's another little mini dash hound just like our puppy asher and she's been great she's pretty feisty and i would throw a photo up or grab her but she's just a ball of energy and pretty much all the pictures that i have are of her sleeping so here she is hold on a second hello hello this is Anya just to keep with our a theme for all of our dogs names of Asher Alvin and now Anya as I said she's a little ball of energy so let me put her back down to run around with the other pups anyway I'll do a proper channel update where I show her off a little bit more. Anyway, that has nothing to do with Fistful of Joes, has nothing to do with Fistful of Cobra. All I had to do was my apologies for missing last week. So, without further ado, let's get to the Cobras. Yo, Joe! Okay, our first figure for this special All Cobra edition of Fistful of Joes Reloaded for the month of Mayhem is Serpentor. Now, this version of Serpentor, I believe, came out in the early 2000s, and it was part of a, I think, either a two or three figure comic pack at the time. Now, I'm a big fan of this Serpentor. Honestly, I loved the original Serp Serpentor, and I really wish I still had him, but I'm hoping to shop around for one, but we'll talk about that more during G.I. Joe July. Anyway, one of the features of this Serpentor that I really, really love is that his helmet is removable there we go it's a little snug of a fit which is always a good bonus ah i can't see help help but you take off his hooded piece here there we go i mean look how angry yet arrogant he looks very fitting and the colors are a little bit more comic booky, a little bit more vibrant and pop, which is, I mean, like I said, like a comic book. And this is part of a comic book pack, so it makes sense. I like the cloth cape. I would have really enjoyed having a green sparkly one like the original, but yellow is a very nice alternative 
Hopefully one day I'll get the original again and we can compare them to each other at some point. There's the back for the detailing. I mean, this is... I really like this molding for the Cobra head. But as far as everything else goes, it's pretty much like the original. You have the molding of the scales and everything of his armor. Now, just for curiosity, if I, I can't see like this. So hold on, let me see. I want to see what the stamp says for year, if I can even see it. It just says Hasbro, and the butt says made in, oh man, it is hard to see, made in China, but I don't see a year. Anyway, I was wondering if it said the real, you know, if it was the original year of 86 stamped on there so the only accessory that he came with was his dagger and instead of being silver like the original it's black this time around but it still has all the great details you know all the molding in the handle and everything looks nice let's give that to him you know he did come with a cobra the original version. I don't know if the second version, the darker one in the early 2000s as well came with a Cobra, but he should have come with like a javelin snake, like in the movie, that you could throw at Duke. Heck, they should have made a Duke where the javelin snake could embed itself in his chest. I know, brings up a lot of bad memories, but hey, we lived through it and so did Duke. Now, to be fair, because he didn't come with a Cobra with this one, I found a snake in a Halloween pack that I've added to his repertoire. Just for fun. So, there we go. That is Serpentor, I believe the third version from the early 2000s. So, let's see who our next Cobra will be. Okay, our second figure is Destro. Now, when I explained in order to do a completely random Cobra episode of Fistful of Joes Reloaded, that I was going to grab two fistfuls and sort through those to get the Cobra figures. I had no idea when I would do that, that I would get the top tier elite members of the Cobra forces. We started with Serpentor, now we have Destro, and just wait to see whom else comes up in this episode. Now anyway, I'm kind of fuzzy on my timeline of G.I. Joe figures. I know that I first got Short Fuse for Christmas from just a rando friend of the family. And I had no idea that that figure would kick off a love affair that has lasted 40 odd years. Now, after I got Short Fuse, I think I got Snake Eyes and then Scarlet Rock and Roll. Then I jumped to my next figure, which was Airborne. After that, I got Destro. And I can tell you when I saw him at the mall, I was completely smitten by his chrome mask. Nothing else was needed. It was just that chrome feature of the figure really drew me in. Now, I am lucky enough to have two of the OG Destros, and I count myself very lucky for that. Now, this one was the second one that I picked up. It was actually gifted to me. By Michael when he sent me that huge care package of G.I. Joe stuff last summer. Now, I do not have the original one from my childhood, 
But when I started collecting G.I. Joe again, uh, I even forget what year it was. I think it was when I turned 29. So, wow, close to 20 years ago at this point that Destro was one of the first ones that I found and I got. And he was complete. Now, I have to point out that this one was not complete. That the gun that he has here was one that came with a weapons pack. As you can see, it's blue and not black like the original. So, just wanted to point that out before we begin. Now, have the original file card, which is awesome. And his awesome backpack. Let's take a look at this real quick, because this was something that, mind you, was infuriating when this thing stopped holding and you couldn't keep it closed for anything. That was always a bummer when I was a kid. But the detailing of inside this backpack is phenomenal. I mean, look at that. You have the pieces of an M16 with a scope. You have some grenades, some knives, a little itty bitty pistol there. I mean, just this was fuel for the imagination. Now, he only came with this awesome pistol. Sorry if it's a little blurry. And like I said, the original was black. This one's blue, and it came in those awesome accessory packs, which Hasbro should release one of those now. A couple of those now. I mean, you imagine getting extra laser rifles, you know, like the OG cartoon ones, or just extra Uzis, or what have you. That would be an awesome feature that they should do on their website. But anyway, I digress. Let's take a look at this, because he is in great shape. I mean, the chrome, little fuzz there not really scuffed up. The camera is probably picking up more issues with it than I can see in real life. I mean, but look at that face. We wouldn't really know until we got to the cartoon era just how expressive those eyes could be, but for this, they're just blacked out. Another thing that fueled the imagination were these rockets that he could launch off his wrist. I mean, you would just be playing, and it would be like, here, take this. And here he had some bombs that he could pull off. At least that's what I pretended they were. Not 100% certain what they are. You know, but he'd be running, and here, take one of these off. But his pendant looks pretty decent. Detailing here. Got like a walkie-talkie. Has a holster here. So, great figure. It just showed the imagination that Hasbro was going to unleash on us with the G.I. Joe line at the time. I mean, yeah. Who knew at this time just the far reaches that they were going to go from space to aliens to dinosaurs what have you yeah sorry this just takes me back anyway let's get to the next one Our next figure is the 25th anniversary version of Wild Weasel. I believe this one came with a two-pack with Ace, I think. You'll know the answer before me when I put the file card up before this part. Anyway, yeah, big fan of Wild Weasel. Growing up, I always wanted a Rattler, and I believe... I got this Wild Weasel before I ever got the original Wild Weasel at a local retro toy store. I believe he was pretty darn cheap, but don't quote me on that. And 
Yeah. Always loved the character. The comic books portrayed him so awesome. He appeared in the cartoon and, again, awesome. So, yeah, was always a fan. Now, I'll have to do some checking and I'll throw some notes up here. Did they ever release a Rattler in the 25th anniversary? Now, I know they did some really awesome vehicles in the 25th anniversary line, but I'm not really sure what all they released. So, I'll have to double check if they released a Rattler, and like I said, the answer will be on the screen. Anyway, let's take a look at this. He only came with a pistol, which is fitting. I mean, he's a pilot. He doesn't need 100 weapons or anything. And let's take him off his base right here. The pistol goes into the holster here on his side. But doesn't fit the best. Could be a little bit lower in there, but it goes all the way in. Now, he also has a knife here. But unlike most of the other G.I. Joe 25th anniversary figures, it's not removable. So that's kind of a bummer. Now, one of the things that always stood out that I absolutely loved about this figure and the original were these cheat sheets that he has here, like piloting cheat sheets, mission cheat sheets, what have you. Loved that. And I think my first exposure to a quote-unquote real-life interpretation of this was in Iron Eagle. But... Great detailing pockets here. It would be, you know, it looks perfect that he would have like a parachute esque clips and fasteners here. Cobra logo. Always love the silver on red. Belts look great. Pouches. Bagginess of the flight suit. But here's something I only realized recently that this comes off. So you can see the steely gaze of Wild Weasel. Nice little feature that they added. And like I said, I don't even remember if I picked up on that when I originally got this figure. I think I just noticed it I don't know, a little bit ago when I was going through my figures. I can't even remember if he got pulled the first time we went through Fistful of Joes. I think he, I think he did, but anyway, I digress. So, the only bummer to his stand. These should be further back because he's like hanging off the stand and it kind of makes it really where he's got a stand all bow-legged just to escape the uh, embossed logo there and of course here we have his file card so not much to say I am curious if they released a Rattler in that era to go along with him random pet hair <laughs> here and there but anyway oh and another thing he of course came with a Operation Rescue Dock. I don't know why I saved these for all the characters too. I just think they're so awesome. Especially with the ransom letter that Cobra Commander included. But anyway, we've read that before in an earlier episode. So, let's jump to our next figure. Our next figure is the Cobra Anti-Armor Specialist Scrap Iron. Now this was a figure I was lucky enough to have as a kid and yeah, anything that came with big awesome accessories included was just the best of the best. I love this character and I think mostly I love that he came with these missiles. I mean, awesome addition. 
I have to rem remembering back. I don't ever remember having this, so I'm pretty sure I lost it pretty quickly. This was another figure that was graciously donated to me by my buddy Michael in that huge collection that he sent my way. And so fortunate to have him back in my collection and yeah. I got the classified figure and I didn't do an episode on reviewing that one. I'm hoping to get back to it one day, but just I love how in the classified version they call back to this in a more modern interpretation. But this thing, this missile launcher, I mean, dude, it worked for G.I. Joe and Cobra if you wanted it to. I mean, this was like getting one of those little mini pack rat vehicle things for free. Of course, nowadays, like with that classified figure, it was deemed, you know, a deluxe figure and they charged extra money for it. But back then, he was normal price and he came with this big honking thing. Now, I'm kind of curious. But I think I have my answer. Now, if you have never seen one of these, it comes in pieces. So the legs come off. Bonk. Bonk. And you have this, and this part came off as well. So, it swivels, which is great. And this is his little control mechanism for it. Now, I just got this idea, and I don't know if it will work or not. I was thinking maybe it could go on his back. But, this little detail here will not allow it so so sad too bad it was just an idea I had other than that he came with this boss pistol like machine gun pistol he's got a little separation there and that's okay I'm gonna try to tighten that up now the only thing looking back at this dude that would have been better is if this was, of course it's a little scuffed up here, but if this was like red, like a red Cobra logo, I think that would just pop a little bit more. But as you can see in the art here on the file card, which again, I'm blessed to have the file card, it's not red. So it wasn't like a paint application that was missing. That's how he was designed. But that's just, I would have added that just so he popped a little bit more. I mean, I love that. Primary military specialty. Tank destroyer. Again, the classified figure, I loved how they scarred up his face. But back then, he was a man of mystery. But let's look at some of the detailing. I like the padded vest here. Got some grenades, got pouches, the belt. Great detailing. You have like these crotch embellishments that kind of have a reptile feel to it. Pistol on the side. Got some forearm pads. Cobra logo. Looking sharp. I love the open shirt with red t-shirt underneath. Maybe it's long sleeve, but I'm thinking it's a t-shirt. Look at these. Got the belt buckles and everything there. good figure so again I had this as a kid super stoked to have it as an adult I mean he's one of in my mind up there in the Cobra echelon ah! anyway on to our last figure Our final figure in this special Cobra edition of Fistful of Joes Reloaded is 
the 25th anniversary version of the Armored Cobra Commander. Now, I'm a big fan of the Armored Cobra Commander, and I probably pointed that out when we covered the original one a few episodes ago in Fistful of Joe's Reloaded. Now, this just happened today, so it's still fresh in my mind. I was looking at Instagram, and I follow a good deal of G.I. Joe content creators and fans, collectors, what have you. Anyway, someone actually said that this is the most trash version of Cobra Commander. And I almost unfollowed that dude right then and there. But I appreciated that he had his own opinion and I kept a stiff upper lip and just marched onward. But the most trash? Dude, have you seen some of the other Cobra Commanders that came after this one? Anyway, one of the reasons, other than being an awesome design, that makes this one of my favorites was it was the first Cobra Commander figure I was able to get as a child. Also, the storyline involving this armored version in the comic books was epic. I won't get into everything because I don't remember everything, so I'm not going to bore you and make myself look like an idiot. Anyway, this version looks great. They kind of kept the original colors, and I mean, it just, it almost looks a little bit more imposing because of the more broader chest on him. Now, another feature it has, of course, this tube is removable, like the original, but it comes off. So it could be Fred, it could be the original Cobra Commander, it could be whoever you want it to be. But they kind of messed up with the paint application there and at his eyebrow. But I ain't hating. But I ain't taking his helmet off that often. Now, this kind of bummed me out. This is how it sits on his back. Because if you do this, look how high that is. You can tell it's meant to be like this. Now, at the original, I always did it with the pointy side up because it looked like a jetpack. So you could fly off with it. But I guess the powers of be a Cobra, this was how it was really intended. But. I mean, I guess you could still, but it doesn't look as clean. Now, he comes with a newer interpretation of his awesome laser pistol with sight. I think that's like an arcing thing. Shoot plasma, what have you. Now, the one thing that kind of bums me out is what is this exactly? It looks like it could be a holster. I mean, look. It's shaped like a pistol, but it's not closed. So whatever you would put in there would fall out. And I don't think he came with a smaller pistol to go in there. I have to fact check myself. But I remember taking this dude out of the package and into the bag where he has been. So I don't think he could have been lost in translation, but you never know. So I will have to fact check myself on that. And if he did come with one, I'll have to find one. I mean, I got drawers and drawers of GI Joe accessories, so it shouldn't be too, too hard to find one. But anyway, I'll just say it again. I'm a big fan of this version and that dude on Instagram doesn't know what he's talking about. And you guys can follow me over on Instagram. It's at my side of the laundry room, and the address will be in the outro if you want to double check me. Oh, ho, 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 ho. Honestly, the only bad thing that happened to this version was the Deke cartoon. Yeah, not cool. But everything else about them, awesome. So we're going to leave you there and head back to me. Okay, folks, back to me. That was a great random picking of five different Cobra figures through different eras of the toy line. 
We had some early 80s, we had some early 2000s, and of course we had the 25th anniversary figures. I had no idea when I was going to grab two fistfuls of Joes that I was going to get some of the highest of Cobra's echelon of officers. I mean, Cobra Commander, Destro, Serpentor. I mean, that's some of the cream of the crop when it comes to Cobra's terrorist organization. But anyway, I'm going to leave it there, so I hope you enjoyed this episode. If you did, please give me a thumbs up. If you got something to say, please leave a comment. I love reading them, and I love getting back to everyone. And if you're new around here and you enjoyed this or any of the episodes that YouTube is recommending down here, please hit subscribe. And if you hit that little bell icon, you will be notified whenever there's a new episode. So anyway, until next time, thanks for watching. Keep being rad, and stay dorky!